Ah, oh, well, this is the scene here in Melbourne. We are ready for the opening ceremony. Sydney put on a tremendous show to remember back in 2000, and you can bet that the city of Melbourne will want to match it here tonight. We've got 80,000 people here in the stadium and a similar number lining the banks of the Yarra River. So sit back and enjoy it. Barry Davis and Hazel Urban will guide us through. But now, the countdown to the 18th Commonwealth Games is about to begin. and colourful pontoons. On to the heart of the city, dressed overall for the occasion. It would be hard to improve on the setting for what is the fourth Commonwealth Games to be held in Australia. A good spot for a village, thought one John Batman, when he negotiated the now infamous treaty with the local indigenous people to purchase 600,000 acres of their land. That was in 1835. It grew with the gold rush to nearby Bendigo and Ballarat in 1850, become a city which will be described as the jewel of the Southern Hemisphere. In 1956, it staged the Olympic Games. Now, 50 years on, having seen with biting lip, Sydney claimed the games of the new millennium, its intent on providing the very best for the Commonwealth. The river will play its part in the opening. 71 pontoons, flags of the competing nations, and decorated with sculptures of the world's fish will provide the gateway for the Queen's battle. England the roach, Scotland the brown trout, Wales the carp, Northern Ireland the northern pike, and Australia short finned eels. Common in the lower Yarra River. And March is the spawning season. They'll be animated every night of the games. At the heart of the games will be the MCG, one of the world's great cricket grounds. It looks a different, little different now from how England will find it on Boxing Day when the Ashes will be at stake. And it's changed a bit from the days when Ron Delaney took the 1500 metres gold from John Landy, now the Governor of Victoria, and Britain's Chris Brasher won the steeplechase on a six-lane track. The night is about different dreams, Aussie humour and candour. Six, I think. And it's getting a huge welcome. This is no copy, this is the real thing. The W class tram is set in service alongside the more modern versions. It's all around the MCG. Real and 
anticipation. W-class tram was first introduced in 1923. This one is circa 1938, the last year of the series. city center. And it disgorges its multifaceted passengers into the grid system of the city's central business district. Sunbound perhaps, or Flinders Street Station, an iconic Melbourne image. Others for a little socialising to the relatively new Federation Square. for the orchestra. Here are the conductors, and as you can see, they will have a dual role to play. And so will the travellers, dressed to emphasise the casual style of society in Melbourne. And gentlemen, welcome to the city of Melbourne and the 18th Commonwealth Games. As parts of Commonwealth Games tradition, we will now raise three flags. The flags of Australia as the host of Melbourne 2006. England, the host of Manchester 2002. And India, the host of the 19th Commonwealth Games to be staged in Delhi four years from now. of St George, the national emblem dating from the 13th century, worn by the soldiers on the Crusades, the Australian flag, the Union Jack in the Upper Hoist Quadrant, the Southern Cross in the second and fourth, a constellation of significance as a navigational feature, the Indian flag from independence in 1947, the spinning wheel symbolizing Gandhi's call for greater economic self-sufficiency. They're not doing badly. Ladies and gentlemen, to host formal proceedings tonight, please welcome Mr. Ronald Walker, Chairman of the Melbourne 2006 Commonwealth Games Corporation. The Honourable Michael Fennell, President of the Commonwealth Games Federation. His Royal Highness, the Prince Edward, Vice Patron of the Commonwealth Games Federation. The Honourable Steve Brax, Premier of Victoria. And the Honourable John Howe, Prime Minister of Australia.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Her Majesty the Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, accompanied by His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Australian National Anthem. Music composed by Scottish born school teacher Peter Dodds McCormick. Actually, dates a long way back to 1878 when it was used at a St Andrew's Day Fair, November the 30th, of course. Sydney and it's begun very well indeed 
and this is the first time ever that a Commonwealth Games opening ceremony has spilled out of the stadium and into the city itself. And just look along the banks of the Yarra River, tens of thousands of people enjoying the show. Boats. And in the surf boats, carriers of the flags of the previous 17 Commonwealth Games.
Like a child with no defense, she will lead you into wisdom, joy, and innocence. passing flock of large birds has a disturbing effect on the duck. discarded objects he might have found at an attic or a garage. Losing his skateboard, he clings to the spire and becomes the onlooker of some mad, not to say hysterical, attempts to rescue him.
in trouble. off it. The wind has now taken it away. The boy tumbles into the void. Performance there from an Australian arts company, it's due to be entitled Legs on the Wall. children's choirs, one local and one national. A young woman appears on a bark canoe, the traditional craft of the indigenous people. The shadow was a bunjil. Supreme God Aboriginal law appearing as an eagle. The bow of the canoe is a glowing source of light. The song is one of welcome between different tribes. Billabong, literal translation, Creek Dead. The boy is fished to safety by the woman's canoe pole.
boy throws stones into the creek to make ripples. The billabong disappears from the stage and elders appear from different language communities across Victoria as the bunjil flies past again. There are 37 different groups in the state. And these cloaks they're wearing are possum skin cloaks. The insides tell the story of their groups, maps of local landscapes and give a visual record of cultural stories and memorable events. sort of business card. members of Victoria's indigenous communities enter, some of them carrying illuminated orbs. towards the boy. And pass to him the light, the gift of knowledge. scene changes and is now full of romantic intrigue as we are under a southern sky to watch the Australian Ballet Company, a parado with a difference and hear from church their classic song Under the Milky Way. It's kind of empty Sound of their breath fades with their light I think about Loveless fascination Under the Milky Way tonight Raise a curtain
At the end, a spiral pathway of stars has been laid. For the boy, a final moment of magic to come. The sometimes confusing dream, let's face it, they usually are, is over. And his friend, the duck, is real to lead him. Boy played by 12-year-old Sean Whitford. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Cat Empire. Please welcome the Athletes of the Commonwealth. last Commonwealth Games in 2002, England. England lead the way. With Tony Alley carrying the flag, 32-year-old from Sheffield, who's in the springboard and synchro swimming, same springboard diving, of course. Yes, England won 165 medals last time around. They won seven badminton medals in Manchester. And the star pairing now has to be the Olympic silver medalist Nathan Robertson and Gail M. They're ranked number one in the world in mixed doubles. Nathan from Nottingham has recovered from the ankle injury which kept him out of the last year's world championship. Gail's going to be busy because she's in the women's doubles as well. And there's a very strong swimming squad as well. 22-year-old Simon Burnett is the biggest name of British swimming at the present time. Since making his international debut at the last Commonwealth, he's catapulted himself into world-class form, breaking the British record in all three of the freestyle sprint races at the trials, including that of 35-year-old Mark Foster in the 53. Flag of Cyprus, only used on international occasions. It's uh, a map of their country. Herodotus Gilgalis is the flag bearer. He is, and these are his fourth games. He comes to Melbourne to mount a joint defence of the gymnastics rings title that he won in Manchester alongside Scotland and Steve Frew. Now, remarkably, both of these men each scored 9.462 for their respective routines in the GMX that day. Gibraltar, ceded to Britain by Spain in 1713, and there have been arguments, it seems, ever since. Eloise Manasco carries the flag. Second games, he's in the uh, air rifle. 21 in the team, four officials. Guernsey follow on the Channel Islands. Last remnants of the medieval dukedom of Normandy. Triathlete Damien Tracker is aiming to outrace his fellow Channel Islander competitors from Jersey. He said that someone has to do it on the global stage. That's what prompted him to take part. Plenty of flags for the Isle of Man. Harry Creevy is the flag bearer from the Aberdeen in Douglas. He's a hotelier. And now we've seen Guernsey, here at Jersey. This is the largest team that Jersey have ever sent to the Games since appearing in 1958. Malta. Ireland in the Mediterranean, awarded the George Cross by King George VI in 1943. William Chikuti, the bronze in the double trap in Manchester. 
was only their second ever medal. Northern Ireland next. It's the whole European group which comes first, as you will have guessed. Yes, it's Louise Aiken who carries the flag. She's in the shooting events, and another man on target should be Northern Ireland's shooting star. Quite literally, retired RAF pilot David Colbert is the province's most successful Commonwealth Games competitor in history. Four golds and three bombs in the full bore rifle competition. And he's expected to be bang on form in the range in Bendigo, just outside the city centre. And here are the Scots, Ian Marsden, shooter. Making sure that everyone sees the flag. Yes, he's making his sixth appearance as the man from Persia, Ian. And Scotland have gold medal ambitions tomorrow when the reigning Olympic champion, Chris Hoy, gets on his bike at the velodrome. The man from Edinburgh so memorably took the time trial gold in Athens. And he's got a battle royal against the old enemy to win here in Melbourne against his great mate and Sydney gold medalist, Jason Queeley. High road and the low road. Wales. Here is the Welsh dragon. Is it to be for David Davis to end 50 years of supremacy in the 1500 metres by the Aussie swimmers? Dame Tanny Gray Thompson, the flag bearer. Yes, you mentioned David Davis, the man from Barry, is about 18 seconds faster than anyone else in the field in the 1500 metres. And March could be a big month for the Davis family. David just turned 21 and perhaps he can provide gold on his parents' silver wedding anniversary. Indeed, incidentally, four golds for their 50. The Welsh team. Quite a long wait for the European competitors. Starting to split into areas. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get on our next guests into the stadium tonight, let's take a few moments to visit the Garrett River, where a flotilla of craft are escorting the Queen's Banner as it approaches Princess Bridge on the final leg of its journey here to the MCG. Carrying the baton is Glen Waverley Rovers junior football club player, Lindsay Blair. Please welcome. Botswana. First of 18 nations from Africa. Public landlocked within South Africa. Population of 1.6 million. Until Mosho, the only female in her team, in their team. Been the only female as an Olympic Games, a World Championship, and now she's got the hat trick. One of the newer members of the Commonwealth family. They joined in 1995. Cameroon. Northwest Africa, south of Nigeria, population of 16.4 million. This is Carol Kaboot. Be in the hurdles. 100 and 400. First games in 98 made an immediate impact, six medals, and they tripled that total in Manchester. Nine goals then. Look, Gambia. Gambia, a narrow strip, just 15.3 miles wide, surrounded on three sides by Senegal and the Atlantic coast. Yes, the, the other. Smallest country on the African continent. One medal in eight appearances, and that was in 1970. A bronze Ghana. in the men's high jump. Ghana from Northwest Africa. Aziz Zachary, 29-year-old. 
sprinter. Well, Ghana didn't have any goals in Manchester, but in long jumper, Ignatius Kese, they've got a genuine hope here. He's 22 years old, he's ranked number two in the world after taking silver in Helsinki last year. And we're now with the Kenyans, they have a hope too. They do, in the shape of Benjamin Limo, the world 5,000 metres champion. He's considered the biggest threat to the Australia's Craig Mottram for that title. No wonder he's keeping a low profile before the showdown on Tuesday morning, your time. Lesotho. Now to southeast of South Africa. For Lesotho, Moses Kopo, welterweight boxer. The Sutra known as the Kingdom in the Sky because the entire country is more than a thousand meters above sea level. One of the few places there in Africa you can actually ski. Malawi. But not here, in Malawi. Sun on the flag. Indicates dawning of a new era. No medal since 1986. Mauritius. Eric Villazar, 400-meter runner. It took them 10 attempts to win their first medal. That came in the Kuala Lumpur Games in 98. They'd waited 40 years to get one. They got four then. Big name of world athletics and the team of Mozambique. In the shape of Maria Matola. We thought her dominance in the 800 metres was coming to an end after she lost her Olympic title to Kelly Holmes in Athens, but never count this woman out. She's great memories of her last big trip to Oz at the Sydney Games, and just last weekend she won a record seven world indoor title in Moscow. She can conquer the jet lag, she'll conquer the Commonwealth title for a third time on the trot. Uh, followed by Namibia, Du Kalitz, who's in the bowls competition. Nigeria. Green and white of Nigeria. First games in 1950. This is their 15th appearance. Renowned as a force in athletics, of course, but Nigeria's talent in table tennis surfaced in Manchester when Sagan Moses Toriola took the men's singles gold and led his country to silver in the team event as well. He's based in Spain, fluent also in Italian, and he's Nigeria's big hope for gold this time around as well. They are expected to bid for the 2014 games in their capital, Abuja. Actually, 115 islands in the Indian Ocean, northeast of Madagascar. Lindy Laveau with their flag. She's a PE teacher and the national javelin champion. Play made their games debut in 1958. Please welcome Sierra Leone. Literally, Lion Mountain. Mohamed Sisse will be in the road race and the time trial in cycling. Well, Ian Thorpe may have grabbed most of the headlines in the pool in Manchester, but South Africa's Natalie Dutoit claimed just as many headlines here. She carries the flag. Those games were her first since losing her leg in a motorcycle accident, and incredibly, Dutoit not only took gold in both of the events for elite athletes with a disability there, but she also reached the final of the able-bodied 800 metres as well, and she's entered in all three events once again in Melbourne. Still the South Africans come. Great hopes in the pool, of course, as well. Ronald Sherman, been a fantastic few years for Aussies, for uh, South African swimming, rather. Stunned the world by taking the four by 100 meters relay in Athens. Now a kingdom, Swaziland. King Mawati, the third. Been in power 20 years. Liz James carries the flag. She's in her 70th decade. Only just. She's a bowler. The United Republic of 
Tanzania. To the north of Mozambique, east coast, the Indian Ocean. A party led by Philbert Bay. The last set a track world record in a Commonwealth Games, 1500 in 1974. Uganda, Uganda follow. Irene Jumbo is the weightlifter. Look out for them in these rugby sevens as well. Their nickname is the Rugby Cranes. You'll see them from tonight, your time, when the rugby sevens kicks off. The Telstra Dome. Last of the African nations, flag carried by a man who uh, took a boxing gold in Manchester at the flyweight level, Kennedy Kanyanka. Joyous celebrations as they come into the MCG tonight. Winners last season of the championship. Warm up matches being played now in readiness for the new season. Picking up the action back in the stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guests from Asia Bangladesh. Second largest Muslim population. Six games. Three medals. Strike for Alam. And the air rifle. All three of their medals have come on the shooting range. Brunei. Fifth games for Brunei. Got their weight, their first medal. Asian Bowls champion has the flag. Aiji Naeem Rahim. In fact, their team of 11 athletes are all long bowlers. Representing over a billion of their countrymen and hosts of the next Commonwealth Games in four years' time, India. While you try pronouncing that name, let me tell you that his friends call him Chile. So. Got an Olympic silver for individual in the double trap shooting in Athens. Yes. India was in fact the number one nation in the shooting events last time around with 14 Commonwealth titles in Manchester. And the main man is Jasper Rana, who's already won eight golds in his career. He needs just two more to equal the Ian Thorpe's Commonwealth record of ten. Total of 36 medals have been won by Malaysia. This is their 11th participation. Hosted the games in 1998 in Kuala Lumpur and won more medals there. And uh, they doubled their total from previous games. Yes, we had a very warm welcome indeed in Kuala Lumpur, metaphorically and literally. Prospects in badminton. Maldives. Well, we have the soft eye, Maldives, southwest tip of the uh, Indian subcontinent, 420 miles from Sri Lanka. They're looking for their first medal as they enter their sixth games. Pakistan. Tenth games for Pakistan, 55 medals to their credit. 
Haider Ali's featherweight gold in Manchester in the boxing room was Pakistan's first Commonwealth Games title since 1970. Mohamed Irfan we really looked at. Won three silvers in weightlifting in Manchester. Dirk Snatch and combined. This time there will only be one medal. Singapore. Team from Singapore. British trading colony in 1819. Yes, and their strength in the table tennis events in here in Melbourne has crystallised in the petite form of Lee Jia Wei, three-time gold medal winner in Manchester. In 1938, they attended their first Commonwealth Games here in Australia, Sri Lanka. Those games the announcer referred to were in Sydney. They've also been in Perth and in Brisbane. Ten medals, three gold for Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka means resplendent island and it was described by explorer Marco Polo as the most beautiful island he's ever seen. It is indeed one of the most vibrant places to visit. Vibrant is a good word for the atmosphere in the stadium. Indeed. Doubtless out on the river where we're going now. Ladies and gentlemen, let's leave the stadium once more as the Queen's batting continues to make its way along the Yarra. Peter Bell of the Fremantle Doctors is handing over to Mark Rusciuto, the captain of the Adelaide Crows. to celebrate the arrival of the athletes of the Commonwealth to Melbourne. Joining us tonight, all the way from the Americas, Belize. Country south of the Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, northeast of Guatemala, population of 280,000. Attending their 14th games in 76 years. Bermuda. A proud moment for 16-year-old Arantxa King. Personal best of 6.39 in the long jump. Pan-Am Junior Champion and the World Junior Champion. Hosts of the very first Commonwealth Games and three more cities. Canada. Chantal Petit-Clark, 11-time Paralympic champion, carrying the flag. She'll be racing against Tani Gray-Thompson of Wales here in the 800 metres title. Elite athletes with a disability. But look out too for diver Alex Despati. He may be only 20, but he's already a Commonwealth Games veteran. When he was only 13, he became the youngest ever gold medalist at the Games on the high platform in Kuala Lumpur eight years ago. Now he's got his eyes on a clean sweep of all three individual titles in Melbourne. Falkland Islands. Islands in plural, 700 of them in fact, in the South Atlantic. They're rather better known to the British in the early 80s. Never present since the Brisbane Games of 1982, but yet to win a medal. Yes, and the wonderfully named Ransford Goodluck in his fourth Commonwealth Games is carrying the flag for Guyana. He'll compete in the shooting events in the full bore. And watch out too for Alian Pompey. She became Guyana's first woman to win a Commonwealth title four years ago. Saint Helena. The island 
probably most famous for the fact that uh, Napoleon died there. Mario Yon, 16-year-old son of the chef de mission Gilbert Yon, has their flag. One of the most remote participants in the Commonwealth Games, about a thousand miles off the coast of Angola. I think it's taken them something like nine days to get here. Cat Empire clearly enjoying themselves. Meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another update from the Yarra, where we can see that the Queen's Baron is making real progress along the river. Richie Vandenberg from Hawthorne has just passed the baton to Michael Voss of the Brisbane Lions. I have to say these big strong boys are walking rather gingerly on these pontoons. <laughs> I think they might be a bit slippy. Yes. Gingerly is not how you would describe the game they play. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Back to the very stadium, exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to welcome from the Caribbean. Anguilla. First of 15 countries from the Caribbean. One of the Leeward Islands, Anguilla. Shara Proctor is in the long jump. Joining us for their seventh Commonwealth Games, Antigua and Barbuda. Another Leeward Island, with two of them. Antigua the larger. That's Crystal Clashing. She's the youngest in the team. She's 16 years old. She'll be in the 50 metres breaststroke and freestyle. Bahamas. The Bahamas, who can certainly make their presence felt. Laverne Eve, defending javelin champion. She's carrying the flag, but some great stars in this Bahamian team. But with Levin Sands, the clear favourite in the men's triple jump, and of course the darling of the islands, Tony Williams, darling. Desperate to emulate her hero, Kathy Freeman, by holding all three major 400 metres titles at the same time. Wednesday morning, we'll find out. This is Barbados. An exuberant team. They've got... A mother and daughter, Jacqueline and Samantha Brown, in the netball team. British Virgin Island. An archipelago of 40 islands, Leeward Islands. Fifth appearance. have only ever competed in athletics. Although this man, Neil Thomas, will be the first to be cycling for them. Cayman Island. Made their debut in 1978 in Edmonton, Alberta. Another cyclist carrying the flag, Perry Merrin, but real medal chances for Kareem Street Thompson in the 100 metres and in the women's 200 metres on the track for Sidoni Mothersill. Dominica. Mervyn Lantang carries the flag of Dominica. Six in the team made their debut in 1970 at Edinburgh. Yet to win a medal. The national anthem, Isle of Beauty, Isle of Splendor. Grenada. Another one. Making their debut in 1970 and no medals. Nisha Berna carrying the flag, but Alan Francis, great chance to win the 400 metres. Jamaica. He's just come from Moscow in the world indoors where he won the title there. Jamaica and the world's fastest man. Yes, Asa Papal, they've sent a really powerful track team, including Bridget Foster-Hilton, 
And of course, the fastest man on the planet, Asif Apal. Asif means rising to the occasion, and he certainly did that last summer when he caught 9.77 seconds. Can he finally land his first major title here? I think yes. Wonderfully colourful gathering. Montserrat. The island so troubled by the volcanic eruption, the Soufriere volcanic eruption in 1995, and it's been uh, bumping up and down a bit since. Michael Henry, only 19 years old, a sprinter. Sixth appearance, but sadly, I believe, without Kim Collins, so he won't be defending his 100-meter title. Yes, sadly, Kim injured at present. Circumstances beyond his control. He won't be challenging Asafa Power. And on their flag, peaks of volcanic pythons rising above the golden beaches. Flag carried by Laverne Spencer in the women's high jump, and she's got a chance. It's the men in Manchester at the seventh time of asking when Dominic Johnson won bronze in the pole vault. Took a long time, what are waiting for? Eight games beginning in Perth in 1962. Uh, Windward Isles, south of St. Lucia, population of uh, 117,500. That's four games they took part just as St. Vincent, winning two medals, but they haven't taken any more since joining forces with the Grenadines in 1994. The most southerly of the West Indian island states. Trinidad and Tobago. And the flag which will be carried to the World Cup in Germany, where they play Sweden first and England second. And it's being carried today by Mark Burns. And we could be in for a Caribbean sweep in the 100 metres because Burns made the final at the World Championships in Helsinki and he wants to emulate Atto Bolden. 15th appearance, they missed just three, 35 medals. Turks and Caicos Island. 30 Windward Islands, only six though inhabited. This is Darian Forbes, a 21-year-old sprinter. Fourth year P student at Lincoln University in St. Louis, Missouri. group to come from Oceania. Once more, we're off to the river, ladies and gentlemen, where the Baton's journey is creating quite a spectacle. from Luke Ball of St Kilda. This is Stephen King of Geelong. Geelong, I beg your pardon. Very colourful sight. Very nice idea. We're meeting a few of their, uh, their sportsmen from their favourite sport, well, next to cricket. <laughs> the season underway. 
warned us before these games got going. Footies all over the box. He's in no hurry. National flags are splendid on the water. And now the entrance of the last of our global regions tonight from Oceania Cook Islands Well they've been trying since Christchurch in 1974 to win a medal but no success yet in the South Pacific the most easterly islands of the South Pacific Watch out for the Cook Islands and the Rugby Sevens, and there's a face on that side which many Rugby League fans will recognise. He's Kevin Iro, formerly of Wigan, St Helens in New Zealand, nicknamed the Beasties, back has changed codes five years after retiring from Rugby to turn out for the Cooks at the tender age of 37. And talking about the Rugby Sevens, what about this lot? Well, Fiji. the flag bearer, as you can see, is in there, but the legendary 37-year-old Wasali Saravi, probably the best sevens player who ever lived. There he is. He's now coaching the side as well and aiming to help finally bring them gold after two consolation silvers in the final against the All Blacks. Saravi has still got the power to totally embarrass anyone who has the temerity to try and tackle him. This is Kiribati. Looks like Kiribati, but uh, a, a T followed by an I is pronounced as an S in this country, 33 islands in the South Pacific. Yes, and they were put on the map firmly and squarely. First place to greet the new millennium. Nauru. Nauru, just north of the Solomon Islands. 24 medals, all from weightlifting. Yes, strength, maybe not in numbers, but certainly in physique. They're including Rihanna Solomon in this team. She's back with two golds from Manchester and the hopes of a 13,000 strong nation are with her again. New Zealand. A big welcome for the All Blacks. Hamish Carter, 2004 triathlon champion. Carries their flag, that's in the Olympics of course in Athens, got the bronze in Manchester. Yes, and a big threat to many sports, but particularly in cycling, will be Sarah Ulmer. Welsh woman Nicole Cook will be watching out for her, better known as a track cyclist than Sarah. She's won everything there is to win on that surface, Olympic, World and Commonwealth goals. And now she's in search of a new challenge out on the roads. She carried the flag at the opening ceremony last time around in Manchester. And of course it should be said that this team might just have a say in the Rugby Sevens. Indeed. Expect goals for the All Black Rugby Sevens, the Silver Ferns, also favourites in the netball, and watch out for their other teams, the Tall Blacks, the Tall Ferns in basketball, and the Black Sticks in hockey. The one medal for 500, got 118 of the gold variety. 250 athletes in this Kiwi side aiming to win between 40 and 50 medals. It's getting pretty crowded down on the track. to the west and the Cook Islands to the east in the uh, South Pacific. Sio Ayoti, super heavyweight. Wait, wait, wait. And the New Islands rugby team has a hacker to match the All Black. It goes something like, we are cannibals, we are cannibals, we will catch you, we will tear you apart and then eat you. And in actual fact, I remember Barry in uh, Manchester, they came in and did the hacker in the studio. Sue and I were slightly unnerved. 
in the Commonwealth, Norfolk Island. Small as territory may be, but the uh, Batten spent four days in Norfolk Island. Another shooter with the flag, Milton Bradley, fourth consecutive games. Only medal was in ladies' bowls. Papua New Guinea. Eastern half of the island of New Guinea, plus 600 nearby islands. They call me the first Papua New Guinea winner in the 100 metres to break 12 seconds. She'll be competing in the MCG when the track and field events get on. Once a German protectorate, occupied by New Zealand at the start of World War I, independent in 1962. Knocked Australia out of the Rugby Sevens last time around, and of course they used to be called Western Samoa. Remember Shaka Sola, shot putter from Samoa, who missed his flight to Helsinki's World Championships last year. It was too late to enter the shot, so he had a go at Javelin instead. It was a lifetime best, obviously, and he was an instant star with the Javelin Mad Fins. He is competing in the shot this time. Slightly bedraggled team, it has to be said. Groups one, two, and three. Here, presumably, uh, Hazel are the wisest people in the world. Solomon Island. Well, apparently, yes. In fact, it was a Spanish explorer, Alvaro de Mendana, who discovered alluvial gold on the Guadalcanal in 1568. He believed he'd found the source of King Solomon's great wealth, and he named the islands the Isles of Solomon as a result. I don't know if they have any disputes there. Fifth game since 1982, still looking for the first medal. Tonga! Market Peligo of Friendly Islands united into the Polynesian Kingdom in 1845, British protected in 1900, independent in 1970. Only monarchy in the South Pacific. Yes, they have athletes, boxers, weightlifters, and of course a rugby sevens team. They're in Samoa's group, actually, along with South Africa and Uganda. And you'll be able to see the start of that sevens tournament this evening when we get underway. Your time, that is. It's, uh, it's a few hours sleep, hopefully, for us in between. <laughs> it's their seventh games. One medal, a bronze from a boxer. I Wolfram, super heavyweight in 1994. That was in Victoria, British Columbia. And it was no fluke either because he won an Olympic silver two years later. Tuvalu. Nine low-lying atolls in the southwest Pacific. 4,500 kilometers from Melbourne, if you'd like to know. Alan Rastuuri, a weightlifter. I beg to thank your pardon, he's a table tennis player. He's carrying their flag today. And very interesting, a major source of income for Tuvalu is derived from the licensing of its .tv internet domain. It nets them about three million pounds a year. Vanuatu follow. Their national anthem is yummy, yummy, yummy. But it means we, we, we. We what, I'm afraid I can't tell you. And in their midst, the youngest ever competitor at the Commonwealth Games. It's not that lady. She is 12-year-old table tennis player, Joshua Shing. We will take the bow for Vanuatu, making history in the process. And 
Ah, uh, we're waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the last of our teams into the stadium tonight. The proud hosts of the 18th Commonwealth Games, Australia. So once again, advance Australia first. That is an anthem I think we will all know the words to by the end of these games. Especially in the pool with the ladies. Prime Minister John Howard applauding vigorously. Well, it's Jane Savile who carries their flag. Race Walker, first ever race walker to carry a flag for any nation at the Commonwealth Games. And very nice for her because she was the lady who was pulled out 200 metres from the stadium in Sydney when she thought she was going to win the 20 kilometre walk. Well, you mentioned how strong this huge team will be in the pool. The women particularly, there's even talk of 17 goals for the girls alone. And you won't get terribly long odds on Libby Lenton claiming seven of those. The 21-year-old from Brisbane broke the world record for the 100 metres at the Aussie Trials earlier this year. And she's one of a triumvirate of female freestylers who could clean up in Melbourne. Watch out for Julie Henry and Alice Mills in the mix as well. Meanwhile on the track, Australia's in a right lather about the chances of Craig Mottram. No athletes won the 1500 metres 5000 double at the Commonwealth Games. And the local lad's got a good chance of making history here. He'll walk from his home to the MCG, about 200 metres away. And in Melbourne, it's netball, which is the honour of closing out the games. That's the last goal to be won, and it's a sure bet that Australia will play New Zealand in another trans-Tasman showdown. The Australians have pipped the Silver Ferns by a single goal in each of the last two events. And for me, it's going to be one of the highlights of these games. And just behind them, I think it's fair to say it's likely to be uh, England against Jamaica. It is. For the bronze. For the bronze, yes. major sporting nation Australia and this the people of Melbourne say is the sporting capital of the country well it's Australia's largest team ever at the Commonwealth Games 431 of them Target 2006 as Australia aiming for 208 medals. That's one more than they claimed in Manchester. They'd like 88 gold medals. It's quite a thought. Well, they've got 1,691 at the moment. It's the most successful nation ever in Commonwealth Games history. What an auditorium that looks. Resplendent in their green and gold blazers. here to applaud them ladies and gentlemen these are the finest athletes of the Commonwealth the talented sportsmen and women from 71 nations and territories who've worked so hard in order to compete over the next 11 days please welcome them all to Melbourne one more time and gentlemen, the Queen's Batter is about to leave the river and the journey that began a year and 186,000 kilometres ago is almost over. Melbourne's David Neitz presents the Queen's Batten to Australian football legend Ron Barassi. And there, to meet Ron Barassi, 
at the end of his walk on water, Olympic gold medalist and one of the greatest milers of all time, Herb Elliott. 1500 metre champion of uh, 1960, broke the four minute mile after only three years of com competition. He can go up those steps six at a time. When he retired, he'd accrued an amazing 44 consecutive victories in world class competition. And he won the MBE for an outstanding service to Australian athletics. There you are, you see, you can now say he walks on water. Well, I have to say that I was wondering why he'd aged so much. This is actually Ron Barassi. The public address announcer led us into error. Long time since we've seen Herb Elliott, but you're going to see him in a minute. Brassi of the Melbourne Football Club and then a coach later of the Carlton Football Club and uh, he had some achievement as a coach he once managed to turn a score round of being 44 points down at half time gently does it Familiar, slightly gaunt features of Herb Elliott. You, know, you can be clearly remembered. Yes, of course he can. City boy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Baron draws nearer. Two great champions of Australian sports: Ron Barassi and Herb Elliott. Australians of the Year, the ceremonial flag of the Commonwealth Games Federation. One of them you'll notice with a guide dog called Lena, that's Sharon Sobey. Australian of the Year. This year, she coordinates outings for visually impaired people through the female tandem bike group. The bar at the center of the flag represents the game's effort to raise the bar of sport for all humanity. Values of the Federation, humanity, equality, and destiny. The flag will be raised by a flag party from St. John's Ambulance. The raising of the flags so far has been very low key and uh, not military people in sight. Previously it was the fire brigade and the ambulance and the police.
club moment for these uh, early 20 year olds. In the spirit of fair play, and on behalf of all the athletes gathered here tonight, an oath will be taken by Australian swimmer Adam Pine. One of the senior members of the team and the butterfly specialist. We declare that we will take part in the 2006 Commonwealth Games in the spirit of true sportsmanship recognizing the rules which govern them and the desirous of participating in them for the honor of our commonwealth and the glory of our sport. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Harry White, the Youth Ambassador for Plan Australia. Your Majesty, during the past 54 years of your reign, you have been the glue that has held us all together in the great Commonwealth of Nations in good times and bad times. The love and great affection that we all hold for you is spread across one third of the world's population in our Commonwealth. In 37 days time, you celebrate your 80th birthday. In order that we share in your celebrations, our chairman has invited Dame Kiri Takanoa to sing happy birthday to you. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, the Right Honourable John Howard, Prime Minister of Australia, the Right Honourable Stephen Brax, Premier of Victoria, Your Excellencies, the Honourable Don McKinnon, Commonwealth Secretary General, Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Mr John Sewell. Distinguished guests, athletes of the Commonwealth, ladies and gentlemen, in a short while, the 18th Commonwealth Games will be declared open by Her Majesty the Queen, and thereafter, competition will commence in earnest in 16 sports, including fully integrated events for athletes with disabilities.
Over the next 11 days, we will witness the finest athletes from 71 countries and territories of the Commonwealth competing for glory, not only in pursuit of medals, but also to achieve their best in the true spirit of friendship. It is our hope that all athletes will exemplify the qualities of fair play, tolerance and respect for all on and off the field in these friendly games. Over the past few years, the Melbourne Organising Committee, led by Mr. Ronald Walker, has worked tirelessly in preparing for these games, and we commend their efforts and the support they have received from the Australian and Victorian governments and the many sponsors who have given their support. We also commend the over 15,000 volunteers who have committed their time and skills to provide invaluable assistance and success of the Games. The Queen's Baton will arrive shortly, bringing the special message from Her Majesty to the athletes and the people of the Commonwealth. On this occasion, history has been created as the baton, for the first time, has traveled to all 71 participating countries and territories, covering over 180,000 kilometers and receiving an extraordinary reception everywhere. In just a few moments, the baton will enter the stadium and I now have the honour and pleasure of inviting Her Majesty to receive the baton, read her message and declare the 18th Commonwealth Games open. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen's Baton. Sporting superstar and Australian icon, Kathy Freeman. Slightly different, but as in Sydney, so in Melbourne. Who will forget that wonderful evening in the 2000 Games when she won 400 metres for her country? Here is a lovely man. The athlete who won the Olympic cauldron here on the MCG in 1956, Ron Clark. Ron Clark really as a man who didn't win an Olympic gold medal, deserved one. Best remembered for setting 17 world records. But he was unlucky that in his time, when he was at his best, the Olympic Games were held at altitude in Mexico City. But for an injury, he might not have been an athlete, he might just have been just a bit. An Aussie rules footballer, he loves the game. Two-time Olympic gold medalist and seven-time Commonwealth Games medalist, Marjorie Jackson Nelson, governor of South Australia. And it's the mayor of the Gold Coast of Queensland who passes the torch to the governor of South Australia. The Lithgow Flash, as she was known, won four titles in the British Empire Games in 1950, justified her favouritism in the Summer Olympics in 1952. She won the 100 and the 200, giving Australia their first successes since 1896.
Australian sporting hero, John Landy, Governor of Victoria. And another absolutely charming man, beaten to the post by Roger Bannister, beaten in this stadium by Ron Delaney in the 1500 metres in the Olympics of 1956. And almost immediately after Bannister had broken the four minute mile, he improved on his time, recording 3.58. He'd come so close so often. Thorough gentleman, noted for his sportsmanship. And Ron Clark, who actually lit the flame in 1956 was once picked up by John Landy in a race when he fell and Landy managed to carry on and win it. That was in an Australian Championship. And how typical that he wanted to bring them all together before climbing the steps to greet Her Majesty. 40 steps. One year and one day ago, on Commonwealth Day 2005, I placed this message in this high-tech baton. It has since been carried around the Commonwealth on every continent and across every ocean by many thousands of voluntary Queen's Baton relay runners. I hope that everyone who saw the battle during its journey recognized it as a symbol of the unity and diversity of our Commonwealth of Nations. The Commonwealth Games are both a product of our unique organization as well as a tangible example of the value of this partnership of peoples. Tonight, we celebrate the value of sport as a means of bringing together people from 71 nations and territories and from a wide range of cultures, traditions and beliefs. As we look forward to the next 11 days, I would like to remind you of the very successful games at Sydney in 1938, in Perth in 1962, and in Brisbane in 1982. Together, they underline the impressive contribution that Australia has made to the successful development of the Commonwealth and to the encouragement of good sportsmanship and friendliness throughout the Commonwealth. I am glad to have this opportunity to offer my best wishes to every athlete and official taking part in these friendly games. I congratulate everyone who has worked tirelessly to organize this great sporting celebration, which I hope will entertain hundreds of millions of people around the world. It now gives me the greatest pleasure to declare the 18th Commonwealth Games open.
Delta Goodwin, former Neighbours star, co-wrote that song together we are one with her partner Brian McFadden. And some of the sparks of passion there, consider them well and truly lit here in Melbourne. And an excellent salute to the athletes who conclude the evening here in the MCG. Prime Minister full of smiles and indeed your Majesty the Queen also. It's been a lovely occasion. And uh, she, of course, has always been very, very fond of the Commonwealth of Nations. Protected it every way that she could. And now for more pyrotechnics.
the end of the Olympic Games here. The Melbourne Age wrote, we hope that the world is carrying away a friendly impression of our manners and our capabilities. Certainly in 2006, from that opening ceremony, the rest of the world will carry away a feeling of great joy and the hope for a successful game. It really was brilliantly done. Spectacular opening ceremony. Let the games begin.